whole change of life. You know, realizing, okay, now we're out on tour, I haven't toured, been sitting on my ass at home or whatever. I've been out, you know, running around and, and rocking out and had to basically like change my whole life in order to be able to keep doing this. And so, you know, you do a show and then you'd be shot, you know, where you'd be kind of like shot for three weeks, but no, you got a show tomorrow. So then it'd take like all these hours of preparation where now it doesn't take me near as long to be ready for right. a show. During the course of the tour, Axel has been involved in heavy-duty psychotherapy in an attempt to deal with the sexual abuse he suffered as a child, among other problems. Last year, I was doing extensive emotional work on myself. So when I'd go out to do a show, it'd be, it, you know, if, if something, I was, you know, uncovering something in my unconscious mind or my mind or whatever, and kind of experiencing it, it'd be really hard to go out and do the show, where that took like a year to get things under control. I'd come off stage and either get on the phone or have the person fly out personally and do four or five hours right after stage, and be, you know, where like someone goes like once a week to like work out their problems for like a half hour, an hour, and I was doing four or five hours a day, you know, like every day. Is it helping? Do it show tonight. Seems to be fine. I'm in a good mood now. Is there a physical regimen that you go through before you go on stage? Um, do you do anything special? I, I, if, if I notice that I'm getting run down, if I notice I have a show where I'm really tired, then I get back into a workout program. Um, and I have like this special machine called a ROM that you can do a half hour workout in four minutes. You know, it's like this thing some scientist built in UCLA. And uh, I have that on the road and I use that. We work with a chiropractor who, you know, little by little, you know, keep all, he helps keep all the muscles in tune and everything. You know, I'm on a vitamin program and stuff like that, basically just general health. But something I've never concentrated on, and this show, the way we perform, demands it. Do you feel like your, your fans sort of are understanding you better or take your problem seriously? I think some people are understanding, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they want what they want, even if they, even if they understand. It's like, you know, if there's a problem on stage and you have to stop the show, they, they don't really care. At that point, you know, they're, they're still upset because they didn't get satiated. They came to see something and, you know, there was something to something bigger. Like if we did a long show and, you know, we, we did a show where we played like three and a half hours in one of the Carolinas, North Carolina or something, like Greensboro, North Carolina. But then there was this comic book about how the crowd was bored and, and leaving and there was no one there. Well, like they didn't seem Some bored. of the people in the back were leaving because they had to get up in a couple hours for work or something. Axel says they've been having technical problems the whole tour and it was damaging his voice. So basically I was having to like sing over 150 kilowatts of sound or something. I didn't do major damage to my vocal cords, but I did enough that if I sang any more under those conditions, I wouldn't be singing. In order to hear myself, to see if I'm on key and tell how loud or how hard I need to push to sing, to sing the song properly, I'd have to try to sing over the PA, which was impossible. feels like Guns N' Roses pulled off a major feat by putting together a stadium tour with their old friends Metallica. One of the big things I learned was that everybody had wanted this tour so bad and worked so hard to make it to be able to do this tour, you know, Metallica through their touring and through our touring to be able to do a stadium tour together that we thought that when we got here it'd just be perfect, it'd be so cool. Well, it kind of turned out to be that Wait a minute, this is so cool that why shouldn't this be the hardest thing we've ever done? I feel it would be right for Metallica to come and do like a normal open, like an opening act amount of playing time on stage. That would really be unfair to their show and would like, you know, kind of make them look smaller. And we didn't want to do that. We wanted them to look as big as they are. You mentioned Giant Stadium the first night was a really good show. Mm -hmm. Was that because the fans were nuts? Was that because... I don't, we they got, weren't nuts. You know, there was just more energy coming off of them. And... Uh, I think a lot of it to do is with uh, Baz and Mike Monroe were standing on the side of the stage and that made me really happy and it was just like, 
you know, just go off. I was really happy that they were there. Who's Baz? Uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Okay. Yeah. And and Mike Monroe, and right. that just was made me like just work harder. I really liked that. Um, and the second night in Giant Stadium was, you know, I got I got hit with a couple things a couple different times. Once when I was like thanking the crowd, and then I got hit later, and it was just kind of like, no. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to allow this. You know, there was technical difficulties in, in Montreal, and we had to leave. And the crowd was very upset about that, you know, and they didn't really like take the time to like think about what went wrong for us. You know, that's kind of hard to take sometimes, and I don't, I don't feel responsible for it for that. The ensuing riot in Montreal started after Axel walked off stage and stopped the concert because of a problem with their PA system. We had just stopped the tour because I had throat problems. Came back and I realized I'm going to hurt myself. Right. I told Slash two more songs. If it's not, if we can't get it fixed, I got to go. You know. And then we did more than two more songs. And finally, I was just kind of like, I don't know what to do. And I looked over, and Gilby was like, Dude, I can't hear. And I mean, it was driving me crazy. And Duff was like, I can't hear either. Yeah, and we had a person. little, we had a little huddle kind of, and was like, We're out of here. <laughs> 